Where did I put my phone? Sorry, guys. I don't even know where I put my phone now. Um, I think up. I may have taken it. No, I may have taken it in. Um, Bernie had a very busy day, but he was so generous to um, say he's coming and chatting to you about his heritage and what makes him such a wonderful, phenomenal person. I've been friends with Bernie forever. <laughs> right, Bernie? <laughs> We've been yeah. buddies forever, and so Vernon is going to say, uh, Vernon Titus is going to um, share his uh, heritage story with us, never? Yeah. So, um, yeah. So, yeah, who look, is Vernon? Yes, <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a quite an existential question to hear about who is this Vernon Big Titus. question! <laughs> <laughs> um, man, I'm an ordinary guy from the Cape Flats, and I think even in our ordinariness, yes. Um, lies power, yes, and lies dynamism. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Sorry, Ben, you can continue. I just want to check. Um, yes, my system is on. Hi, guys, Sharon here from School Corridor. This is Ben. If you just joined us, Ben is giving us hopefully all the word. Yeah. Look, I uh, Sharon, the two of us met at oh, Grassy Park High School. Yes. Um, many moons ago, mm -hmm. I was a teacher at Grassy Park in 1989. I started there mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. um, spent the 16 best years and the 16 worst yes. years of my life there. <laughs> yeah. um, but I think, you know, when, when one speaks of heritage, then the issue of identity is very closely linked there we go. to heritage. Um, but it's also the legacy that we leave. So mm. I'm sitting here as Vernon Titus, mm. son of Dawn. Son of Dawn. Son of Dawn. Son of Dawn Titus. Yes. And Leslie Titus. And Leslie Titus. Grandson of Peter Lewin. Does it now? And <laughs> Ethel Clarina Galant. <laughs> Say it again. Okay. And what? Ethel Clarina Galant. Ethel Clarina Galant. You don't even hear that name anymore, eh? Yes, yes. Unusual um, but it's, it's, it comes from my, my great grandmother's name, Clara. Clara oh, Swartz. Okay. Um, and I have seen in my own being, because often we think that heritage are only these tangible things. Yes. But it's also these things that are really sitting in your bones. Um, Great grandmother Clara mm. was a, um, she was a, a, a flower seller. Oh, wow. But she was one of a handful of people that could, that could actually read and write. In the community oh, uh, where okay. they live, they lived near near where Portsmouth Prison is now. Oh, they, to they Kai, to in, Kai, in the Tukai in, area. Let's say Kirsten <laughs> off. Oh, sorry, it's Kirsten, Kirsten off. off, Kirsten, Kirsten off. off. Right. So that is where <laughs> where, where they lived um, uh, prior to the group areas and and the eviction. Our family was the last, um, the very last to be evicted. Really? Um, I was born in 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 Kirsten, in that area, Kirsten off. Oh wow! And our family was the very last to be to, to, to have been moved out. Yeah. Your so, um, but great grand was a an avid reader and a writer, a writer of letters. 
oh. to the community. So, but you can listen, scrape me. She did that on behalf. So she was a community person. Okay. So I think our community involvement, our sense of community, had really stemmed from there. And when I think of heritage, I don't only think of the tangible issues. Mm -hmm. I'm also thinking of the issues of um, of intellect. Yes. I'm thinking yes. of the issues of um, of uh, uh, identity mm -hmm. and understanding what community means. Wow. So, wow. so I think that is where we we get that kind of consciousness from. Mm. Um, Sharon, I don't know if you know, my dad was an athlete. Uh, quite a phenomenal one. Okay. At one stage in the 19, 1960s, he was the African record holder in the mile. Wow, guys. Repeat. Hello, it's Vernon Titus and he's sharing his heritage story and he's just saying that his dad was an amazing athlete and now I want him to repeat what he said now. I he said was, my father was the African record holder in the mile during the 1960s. Wow. Um, some of his awesome. story you can you can read um, on Athletics Club Board. Yes. yes. Um, part of part of our local athletes mm -hmm. um, whose names aren't written up mm -hmm. by other authors are on the Athletics Club Board. I saw um, I saw your dad's name there, but I didn't know that it was the African. Record holder, world. He was the African, African, was the African holder. record holder in the wow, mile. Wow, in the mile, guys. So, wow. um, so I think we grew up, Sharon, understanding mm. that that he had potential, mm. but it was a potential that was snuffed by the policies of, of, of snuffed. Of the country. <laughs> What it was. Yeah, that is what it was. Um, he was tipped to be um, to participate in the Tokyo Olympics of 1964. Wow! But because of the Sharpeville massacre in 1960, okay. he, South Africa was banned. Yes. And um, wow. he's, he, he, I think, he never really um, got over the fact mm. that that was such a massive opportunity. Mm. Um, that he was not granted. Yes. And so I think our whole political consciousness, mm. our life view was shaped by that experience. Mm. Um, and the fact that how, how we viewed um, life and what had happened. Mm. I think my, our earlier memories, um, my, my father couldn't really speak English very well. So... Um, oh, sorry. Sierbrak, man. Oh, sorry, Sierbrak. Sierbrak. Yeah, Sierbrak. Also Sierbrak. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So, you, Vinny, you guys took over the whole Western Cape, basically. <laughs> we still have family yeah. in Sierbrak. Yeah, Sierbrak. We still have family in Sierbrak. My father's um, um, only surviving sister is still in Sierbrak. Wow. Auntie Katie. Mm. Um, I've got cousins and, and, mm. and, and, and very close family members still there. Rich, rich history. Yeah. Very rich history. Mm. And... Um, you know, I think that that one of the things that I've learned from, from my dad, I suppose, is um, he couldn't speak English very well, but he was fluent in Afrikaans extremely well. He could a very good Afrikaans. Yeah, that's what he did. English, we did. But he didn't know. Ma. 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 And the Afrikaans from Pa. The Afrikaans from Pa. And Pa, uh, at one stage, we had a neighbor. Mr. Jacobs, who could only converse in English. They were from oh, Weinberg, you know, Sharon. Okay, yes. They were but from Weinberg. You took your one foot in Kirsten off. <laughs> <laughs> so Weinberg is... <laughs> but, you, but you but know I mean, Weinberg, yeah. and only the English-speaking yeah, folks came from Weinberg. So mm -hmm. Mr. Jacobs was from Weinberg and spoke only English. And my father was from Sierbrand and only spoke Afrikaans. <laughs> So the two of them was like Burki and Roynek from the rapport <laughs> talking, speaking to each other over the fence. But we grew up like that. Um, but I think one of the things that, that stand out for me is um, how heritage is shaped in your home, in your space, in your legacy that you leave, yeah. you know. Um, so, yeah, coming back to the story of, of me at, as a teacher at Crossy Park High. <laughs> as a, are you done with your dad's story? So, mm. Bernie, yeah. Do you want to speak a little bit more about dad? Ah, okay, okay. And then, which is not fun, when Lindo was not. Okay, so, so, um, so, 
my father was the eldest mm. and i think one of the one of the things that i think we realized very early on my father was the eldest from from his side from his siblings okay and my mother was the eldest from her siblings okay. but with this with this uh, 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 um uh uh, um, age gap between them and the and the next lot, okay. we realize that there's a lot of value and a lot of esteem and prestige because nobody called my father on his name, everybody called him Booty. Wow. Because he was the eldest. Yeah. Only later on I realized that that is really such a term of endearment and respect for an older sibling. Yes, yes. Um, but with that, the children of that older sibling also had some some privileges that came with yeah, it. Yeah, so you put it down. So so we had all kinds of other yeah, privileges yeah, other yeah, cousins didn't yeah. get. Yo. My mother was Titi because she was mm. not from that side and we when we get gone um, every every December, um the entire family used to trek up to Serbra. Mm. Um all the cousins, mm. um my father's siblings, um uh, his cousins, mm. um, my granny's sister's children. Mm. Ons was op een keer, was ons seker 40, 50 mense daar. Mm. Two bedroom daars. We sleep outside, mm. we sleep in, the, in die buiten huisie. Mm. Um, they had a two bedroom place. There was no running water at the time. Um, it was like a small holding that they were living on. Mm. But we had the, a ball of a time mm. every, every uh, December. And why I say that there were privileges attached to it? Um, because my mother and father would get the best bed. Uh, in the yeah. house. Putty and titi. Putty and titi. Putty and titi. Putty and titi. Right. Um, and we would get the second best. If they were sleeping on the stoop, which was enclosed. Yes. That was a stoop stoop. Um, enclosed. So we had, a, and, and that was our little pr- privilege. Yeah, I suppose that and I understand where Bernie's. Sometimes you can see, you know, the arrogance. The arrogance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Bernie's telling his story, his heritage story. So, yeah. um, get your friends and family to come tune in and listen to this lovely chat. Yeah, Putin and, 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 and Titi. Yeah, okay, so, and then, so what, I've, what I think what we've realized over the years mm. is that um, that didn't necessarily only happen in, in colored communities, so called colored mm. communities at the time. That actually spanned wider than just it was a cultural phenomenon mm. that an older sibling um, in the absence of parents mm. had the right to advise had the right to discipline mm. had the right to reprimand mm. um, and if there was advice that was required that was the role of the of the of the older sibling mm. now that is part of our heritage i think of course. that that we often sort of um miss out or miss out on mm. um so my my dad um eventually after um his, his running career ended he became a traffic officer mm. and um after his um, and they still talk about him today eh? yeah yeah he became a traffic officer first a meter reader okay that's not even a meter reader see but okay um <laughs> it was explained by the younger people on the if there are younger people yeah <laughs> sorry the kevin lewin is on <laughs> kevin. Hi, kevin. Hi, kevin. You hear your cousin talking here, Kevin. We should have invited you. <laughs> so, Thanks for coming, Kevin. Uh, so, if, if for, for for younger people um, uh, watching watching at the moment, uh, streaming at the moment, um, a meter reader was the person who checked that where you've parked, there was a a, a, a little a, a meter next to um, next to the parking bay, mm. and would check. That you were paid up in terms of your in terms of your the, the, the time frame mm-hmm. that you were going to be sitting there. Your parking parking time, yeah. So my father was initially a meter reader, okay. and eventually he became um, he became a, um, a a traffic officer. Mm-hmm. And when I was in standard five, grade seven now, um, he resigned oh. and he started his own business. My father was a jack of all trades, oh. right? Um, he could do anything. He months a what are no fast to follow the better cut then he's the one to go and help if the church's roof needs fixing he's mm. the one that's doing that okay. um so very practical mm. very very handy tot op skoene sharen het die man van ons het ons het skoene het skoene gemaakt ons they call custom made shoes now na bespoke bespoke oh sorry bespoke it's bespoke it's bespoke it's bespoke it's bespoke it's bespoke suits so he was he was he was he was really uh, ahead of his years very creative. Yeah. I think a lot of um, and he wrote poetry. 
So a lot of That's a lot of the kind of you inherited, right? Yeah. So so some of the some of the some of those kinds of talents, mm-hmm. um, I think we've we've inherited Jenny and I from 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 my dad. Mm. Um, Jenny with a handy thing, handy kind of works. Mm. She can fix up anything. Wow. Um, so so she mm. inherited that mm. part. My honor is dumb. So ek 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 kapra. Ek kapra. Ek kapra. Ek kapra. Right. 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 So so yeah. I just like that. I think I learned that from you guys. Right? Awesome. Kapla all the word. Where? What? To what is this term all about? Uspre kapla all the word. Yes. Yeah. yeah so wow, what an interesting part. So do you want a, your class now? No. I'll have my class a little oh, later. Okay. So, so my dad had really a sort of a soft-spoken kind of guy, mm. but um, but a, a, a real hard worker. Mm. And I think for after we we as children didn't quite understand at the time because my father was so hardworking that we used to see him early in the morning and late at night, mm. um, especially when he was doing his bolding work. Mm. And it was only years later that I realized that. The men of that era had a very different way of showing emotion, mm. showing love, yeah. showing um, any kind of, of of affection. Yeah, yeah. They had a very different way of mm. doing that, and um, providing for your family, I mm. mean, was was that was, in, that was enough that was to show that, that yes. Yeah, yeah. So I think that was one of the things that he was really um, really reveling in the fact that he could provide a home for us. Mm. The fact that he could um, could see us through university, mm. um, you know, that was. Yeah. <coughs> I think you might invite that to bring the class now. <laughs> so you now, you know, when I talk to you, I get this class quicker because I'm like just sitting in. Okay. No, so my, There's my, some juice now. Look at it. No, you can talk into the camera. Yeah. Then I can. Are you still so okay? When you latch on to the next part of your of your history. So so I wanted to Shannon. I wanted to speak a little bit about um, about my teaching at Grassy Park High. Okay, yeah. So Vern is going to tell you so Vern, yeah. So so you I, talk to him and then I come and I get your juice and then I'll yeah. be with you. Look, I started teaching at I was just about twenty one um, when I started at Grassy Park High School. Mm. Um, I remember. We were called we were called the death row because we sat there and no one knew what to say. Yes, um, you were the shy. But within the first year, we became the rebels without the cause. Oh yes, we came fresh from the nineteen eighties um, uh, um, class boycotts. Thanks, Sharon. Please. We came. Fresh from the 1980s class boycotts. Yes, we were in children, the people history. Um, and we were rearing to make a difference mm. because we were going to change the world. Yeah, yeah. And I think um, we were also very, uh, um, I think, very clear yeah. about what our role was going to be and how, as a teacher, our role was to shape mm. and to shape the minds of people differently. Mm. And I think that sort of played a very, very big role in in how we dealt with the curriculum mm. because oh, at yes. the time. The curriculum was very set, mm. and you had to do as the curriculum as the curriculum stated. Mm. And I remember um, in the first in the first few um, weeks of my teaching, mm. I had a history class, grade eight, mm. standard six at the time, mm. and um, we had to teach the industrial revolution, mm. and. I had looked at Alexander Graham Bell, and I had looked at the and I thought to myself, "Am I really going to be teaching all of these things that a lot of the kids, at, well, a lot of South African kids, could really not identify with?" Mm. Um, but I was dead set on having to teach it, and I found a very convenient angle. Mm. Um, the impact of the Industrial Revolution. On the shaping of Marxism, three hundred theses, grade eight today, <laughs> and I thought, but how about the start of trade unionism as a response to the industrial revolution? And um, I taught the kids um, a little bit about Alexander Graham Bell, but the emphasis mm. fell on the start of Marxism, <laughs> commun- communism, capitalism, and other economic yeah, systems. Yeah, good. And. Um, I was very nervous when I set the first paper because the the school was very hierarchical at the time. Mm. 
and we were told that we are the newbies mm. and we need to know also our place to a mm. certain extent and I had set the question paper on all of the philosophies the Marxism and all of these things that I had taught the children mm. and to test my, what you teach yes mm. and to my surprise the the head of department at the time I think it was um, Royston Pillay who is now the um, the vice the registrar at UCT. UCT. Royston Pillay looked at my question paper and he said, excellent work, Mr. Titus. Wow. Very, very well done. Mm. I'm very keen to see what else you will be bringing wow. to the table. So I think that mm. sort of was a, a sort of a pat on the back to say, mm. guys, we understand and we are all in this together. So, mm. so a lot of that, those 16 years have really shaped mm. us. But I also wanted to speak, Sharon, about um, heritage and the issue of agency. Oh, wow. Heritage and agency. We, with you. For, for me, the issue is not only about what happens to us. It is about us being active participants in our lives yep. and shaping heritage. Yep. And shaping legacy. Correct. And influencing that. I hear a lot of people jumping up and down about how the curriculum is too colonial, how um, my son was one of these at Toy Toy Day at UWC, oh, now recently uh, with the fees was for yes. my daughter at UCT, about the anti-colonialist um, uh, movements, mm. and I agree mm. wholeheartedly mm. with what the young people are saying. Mm. But we need people to write these stories out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We need people to create the material that makes the difference. There we go. Um, I think that's a good point. That is the gap. Um, it's fine to say um, yes, uh, we need to we need to have our stories told, mm. but we need to be writing up our stories. Mm. When now during lockdown, my mother lives alone. Sharon, my mother's eighty one. Yeah, sure. And during lockdown, level five, she was very depressed because, um, like me, she's a she's a people person mm. and felt very really isolated. Mm. And you know what her saviour has been through this time? She started writing her stories as her childhood stories up from Paul Smoor days, yes, from the Kukai days, Kirsten of days. She started writing up all of those oh. stories. And that was her saviour and salvation during this time that she was struggling with having to cope. I think, you know, um, we need to be writing our history up. Mm -hmm. We need to be writing our heritage mm -hmm. up. We need to tell the different kinds of stories. Mm. So when I was teaching at Rossi Park High, I think it was a different kind of era. It was a time where we were very, very optimistic about mm. where we began to go. Ooh. And we were also very goal-directed. Yes. Was, we were very clear about what has to be achieved. Mm. But we were also very clear about the fact that the, it was a community school and we didn't have the resources. Mm -hmm. But we were so proud that we were not going to be standing back for any other school anywhere, yeah. even the most resourced schools. There we go. And we were never that going was to be, this culture of I the think that was the culture. But we were also never going to be waiting for a department to be handed no, out. No, no. Y or Z. No victim. No victim. No uh, victim. Mm -mm. Shall you know the, the whole story with, with the ABC of victim, no? Mm-mm. ABC or victim language? No, give it to me. Accuse. accuse. A for accuse. A, uh. B for blame. Yeah. And C for complain. Okay, guys, repeat then because we, if you accuse, blame, blame and, and complain. 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 You are in victim mode and then you are not helping us to advance. Exactly. You're not helping to rewrite our history. Exactly. Or our heritage. Or tell or our, our heritage. Or tell our stories, guys. Yeah. That's yeah. powerful then. Yeah. So so I think um, because I, at the time, we were surrounded mm. um, by other like-minded and other critical people yes. within the organization yeah. at Grassy Park at the time, I think we shaped each other mm. and molded mm. each other in a way mm. that I think did not happen at a, at a number of other no. schools. No. So um, out of that, um, in one of the, I, I had a grade nine history class. And um, I was confident enough to decide that I am chucking out the curriculum at the time. <laughs> and I am bringing in a human rights module. Wow. In grade nine. And part of the module um, annually 
we brought in a trip to the Robin Island um, Museum mm-hmm. on Robin Island. Mm-hmm. And I think the other part of it was around um, um, linkages that we had with the Holocaust Museum. Mm-hmm. Um, we were speaking about Pan Africanism. Mm-hmm. And we started with the Ezekiel Museum. We had a relationship where the kids went on a workshop annually mm-hmm. there. So it was a structured program mm-hmm. that we did for quite a number of years. Mm-hmm. And that was the, and what they had to do was um, provide a portfolio of evidence. Mm. And I think this was the precursor to the whole issue of portfolios. It was a time where that wasn't even on vogue. No, for sure. That was like, sure. Futuristic. So, um, so it did, I think, I think we tried our damnest mm. to do what we could. Mm. But we also used not only the resources at our disposal, we all used our own resources. Yeah. How did we do the papers then? And what is that place? That, and I remember the Upbeat magazine was one of our chief magazines to use for the kids because it was so, uh, the language was accessible, yes. told the real history about conscientizing the children while they are learning whichever technical stuff they needed to learn. Yes. What is that place? With the great, great files. Uh, yes, I remember. I yeah. now. And that was, and I think that touches on, you know, it sort of latches onto the point where you said, we mustn't be victims. No. We, we cannot be our victims. our agency. That is the whole We point, okay? have to take, we have to take ownership. responsibility and ownership mm. for ourselves. Mm. I think there is a kind of a malaise within the communities of the Cape Flats. Mm. Um, it's partly about the issues of identity. Mm-hmm. It's about the issues of self-denial. Mm-hmm. Um, it's about um, the issues of longing for the kind of privilege that we've had. Mm-hmm. Um, there are a number of those kinds of issues that underpin mm. some of what, what I'm saying. Um, but a lot of that has to do with the fact that um, we are actually everybody. Mm. In essence, yeah. Um, not only from where we, from where we, from where we, how we look, mm. but um, the um, our, our own genome mm. structure is the structure of the entire world. Genome structure. So, so, so for me, the <laughs> itch. Kind of I know, I like the PC. Then it's like, you guys, you get to the whole day and conversation <laughs> seriously. So, so I I do think that there's there's a um, there's a especially amongst amongst coloured folk, mm. um, there is a we are a little bit on a pity party also. Yeah, um, all the time. And I think that actually negates. I'm I'm not negating the fact that there are real things mm. and and particular forces that put blockages in place. Of course, I I don't deny that. Mm. Um, I, there I are agree. serious structural issues. There are structural issues. Serious. But? But we have our stories. There we go. We have our history. There we go. We have our identity. Yep. And we must become unashamed of mm. it. And I think part of where we are at, mm. Sharon, is this whole denialism mm. about who we are and what we're not. Mm. Um, so, um, for all of the nice English that I can speak, I like my slang, Prat. Yeah, way nice slang. Like I can carp, Prat. <laughs> way nice slang. <laughs> um, because that is part of, of our, our legacy. It's part history. of the legacy. And our... It's part of our history. It's part of, of the people. Yep. Um, but that is not the sum total of the people. Exactly. And I think that is, that is what a lot of people try or tend to forget. Mm. So, um, mm. so, some of us believe in black consciousness. Mm. And um, some of us um, still believe that we should not be calling ourselves colored. Mm. And others say, no, but that is my identity and I don't have a problem with that. And that is all fine. Mm. But don't get hung up on that. Don't get hung up because we're not a homogenous group of people. There is no such thing as one homogenous group of people Mm. with the same kinds of thinking and identity. Mm. Um, And the other thing that I also want to say is issues of culture and issues of identity and issues of um, heritage Mm. can also shift and shape Mm. because it's not stagnant, it's not fluid, it's 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 alive, it's It's alive. alive. Yeah, we create as we we, we we move along. along. Yes. And so, um, and so... I'm sitting here with my with my um, awesome. with my traditional gear. Always. Because Always. Um, uh, 
in the lineage. Wer ist die Kasse yes. um, in der Familie? Yes. Mein Tür. Um, wer ist die Kasse Koi Koi Roots? Ja. Yeah. Uh, Koi. Me. <laughs> koi, koi, koi. Me. Is, we do have cool, clear, we we have have clear, clear yeah. roots there. Um, and I think when it comes to heritage and dispossession, mm. Sharon, I think the worst thing that can happen to a community is to be dispossessed not only of land, mm. but of culture, of identity, mm. of heritage, of everything. Mm. Mm. And I think this is what has happened to to Kuku or Koi mm. um, communities. Um, And and so I do so feel very passionate mm-hmm. about um, that part of mm-hmm. our identity, mm-hmm. and not all of people in this on the Cape Flats has Koi San heritage, mm-hmm. um, and there's slave heritage, but not all have slave heritage, mm-hmm. and um, there are Afrikaner, but not all have Afrikaner mm-hmm. heritage. And mm-hmm. I, I think that is the point that I'm trying to make no, here. No, very clear. Um, the other thing is also the issues of identity. Has been so shaped by our own limited perceptions of what what um, what it means to be human, mm. um, and so we have become so gullible over what the differences are between mm. us, as opposed to what is it that make us part of this um, human experience. Mm. Um, Uh, someone said to me once that we are actually spiritual beings having a human experience, and mm. I quite like that phrase. I also like it. Yeah. Uh, and we are part of this human experience, and now we need to be looking at what is it in our spaces that we will still hold up, yeah, and that we are still proud of, yeah, um, as part of our as part of our identity. Yes. Shall I brought with me? Yeah. Yo. Oh, first of all, I tell you, even tell me okay. to see that be heritage day to us here. I tell you. I tell you. Lovely to have you here, guys. Yes, drop. I'm sure um, you you know this is going to be a powerful replay that um, people can watch afterwards, and I'm, I'll be putting it on the YouTube um, channel as well, so that it stays there and it becomes part of the the legacy, part of the history, part of the heritage. Yeah. No, Ben, that is powerful stuff. Um, so, so yeah. Sharon, the last thing that well, one of the the, the things that that What's I want to this? show. Oh yes. Ah. Um, can, can we take it closer? Then? Part uh, of what I wanted to keep it closer so that I can see. Um, during my stint at at Grassy Park High in the sixteen years, mm. my very dear friend and comrade and colleague. Who want to add it, Miss Agnes? Um, Valdi, Valdi van Rienen, the mm. Roo. Mm. Um. Activist of um, note, a social activist of note, right? And a very dear friend of mine. The two of us were working in the history department together, mm-hmm. and um, this is where the issue of of agency comes in, um, Sharon. Mm-hmm. Because we knew that we couldn't afford, as a school, mm-hmm. to take the kids at the time to the Robin Island Museum and to the island there on a on an annual basis. Yeah. We developed a Robin Island board game. Mm. Well, it's called and uh, the Island of Many Voices. It's a it's a human rights board game. Mm. So part of what this game was supposed to do mm. was to bring Robin Island into the classroom. But we really wanted to tell the story of. Um, of course, we couldn't use the word. Um, Robin Island, because that word that 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 has been that was um, not banned. That is not underwater, but, <laughs> but it's not trademark. So we we oh, as yes, registered, as right. registered. Yes. So you cannot, ah. we cannot. So yes. so we've we've called the game the Island of Many Voices, ah. and it really speaks to um, to um, 18th and 9th. We've we've obviously tried not to do the contemporary Robin Island story mm-hmm. because that has been told over and over. Mm-hmm. Um, we wanted to tell the story of the island in the in the um, in the in the eighteenth, seventeenth, eighteenth, and nineteenth century. Mm. And um, we've done our research as ordinary teachers. Mm-hmm. Um, we read Jan van Riebeek's notes, Very his young. diaries. Very old Jan van Riebeek's diaries. We read. Yes. Um, but I think what we have stumbled across. Mm. Are powerful stories of um, of survival mm-hmm. and resistance, and I think that element 
um, those stories mm. of survival mm. and resistance Balance. are stories that still hold true for today. Mm. The um, the I think the 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 focus might be different. Mm. Um, the issues might be slightly different, mm. Mm. but the issues are still about power yes. and subjugation. Yeah, um, it's it's those are still the yeah. issues. Yeah. Um, it's still power play that we're talking about. We're talking about econo economic power. Mm. We're talking of political power. We're talking of marginalization. Mm. We're talking of classism. Mm. We're talking of those that are now the new elite mm. and others that are um, that, 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 that are marginalized mm. um, individuals of society. Mm. It's the same kind of things. Mm. Um, because the, we've, we've, we've had a story of, I think some of you would know the story of Achamato. Yes, um, yes. Uh, who, was, who was one of the, um, one of the first translators at the, at the Cape, but also yes. what, one of the first to be incarcerated on Robben Island. Mm, yes. And also the first to escape from the island. Yes. But so, that story is not commonly known, eh? It's not commonly known. But it's touched in and, this. Yes. yes, and then there's the story of Kraptoa. Yes, um, it, it's actually quite a tragic story mm -hmm. of this 14-year-old um, from the Khoranga Kona mm -hmm. you, you can um, well, who well, had actually taken up the role while Ochamatu, her uncle, was incarcerated on the island, had taken over the role as translator. Mm. So she could speak Dutch mm. and the yeah. local languages yeah. um, and was quite adept at it. Mm. Was baptized and actually married um, the post holder, mm. a white man. Mm. Now, for societal rules at the time, it might not have been the appropriate thing. Mm. But he became then the post holder mm. and was then on the island and she was there too. Mm. And on one of the hiking, uh, hunting trips that the husband had gone on, mm. he was he was killed, mm. and she then had come back mm. to to main to the mainland, mm. had tremendous struggles, mm. and I think she died at the age of thirty five. Yeah. But a very tragic story very tragic. of a talented woman mm. um, who. Uh, whose life had taken mm. a different kind of mm. a different kind of turn. Mm. Um, we stumbled across oh. a story, Sharon, in the in the um, in and the that next. story is told in that movie also, but they romanticize a bit. There's quite a bit of but there's a lot of it. truth in it as well. Yeah. Eh? There's about been a the couple of dramas about Krotoa as well. Yeah, um, yeah. I've seen around. Yeah, the the dramas as in as in local local oh um, wow uh, local productions local productions yeah oh wow about Krotoa. sure. Yeah, when he, I'm all ears, guys. When he's just telling us about when um, the, he was very sort of um, said that we need to use, you know, we need to um, acknowledge our agency. We need to know that we have the power to change things. We must stop acting A, B, C. A accuse, B blame, and C uh, complain. complain. Yeah. And no, so he's telling us about this. Yeah. So then, yeah, I just interrupted, which I'm so... so Lady won't notorious for. So there's a the the um I think you know um some of the other stories we might be familiar with the Makanda story, mm. the Makoba story, um but there might be local stories that we that we might not know. Mm. Um we we um we uh, 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 stumbled across a very fascinating story um that that played off in the nineteen in the in the nineteen hundreds. Oh. Um, the, no, in the, yeah, it, in the early 1900s, yes. Um, the, uh, 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 um, no, I think it was 18 something. Yes, at, at, but in Deep River. Okay. Story plays off in Deep River. Slave, a Muslim family um, from slave heritage. Mm. And part of it was the, um, uh, uh, Khrip was one of the, um, the, 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 the family um. had a big, function because the, the daughter had turned 21. Okay. It was the 21st and they had this big, big mm. um, party. party at the house. With coaches and alles. Right. But they performed this ritual called Ratip. Oh. I don't know if you, if oh. Muslim people will know the, the um, 
That where they where they cut you with the sabre oh, and you're not supposed yes, to bleed yes, and all of that. That's right. Mm. And um, so they were doing this ratip. And um, what it means is that you're supposed to have all of this intense and immense faith that you would not bleed. Mm -hmm. And so a young man was lying on the on the table, and they were singing and chanting and whatever, and they did the ratip, and they um, put the table into his flesh. And unfortunately, and the man died. Of course, it was a whole big thing. It was a big drama. And um, immediately, whoever had performed this um, ratip, yeah, this, this ritual, mm. um, was taken to, to jail and eventually was sentenced to Robben Island. Oh. So Robben Island really became yeah. the place for... Um, for a number of people. And petty crimes. Yes. Ah. There was a story oh. of a child who saw a man walking by and took a stone. A young child under mm. 10 took a stone and threw the guy with a stone mm. against the temple and he died immediately. Child also banished. Robin Island. Robin Island. Island. There's a story of Anki. Um... The, there was this very, very big, um, very powerful farmer, mm. um, white farmer, mm. um, with a whole entourage of, of um, domestic worker servants, as they would call it mm. at the time, um, and slaves, mm. uh, who was working in, in their household. Mm. And part of what has transpired was that the daughter, the, the, this a very prominent father, farmer's um, wife, had passed, mm -hmm. and he had this daughter in her early 20s. Okay. And the daughter had become pregnant, but it was at the time as the social norms and mores at the time mm. um, uh, detected, it was a great shame, mm. but nobody knew. And she left this thing hidden. She confided in one of the servants and said that they must please help her in one of those, one of the slaves. Mm. They must please help her. Because the shame will just be immense. Mm. And um, she had managed to, very secretively, um, she has managed to, to hide her, her pregnancy mm. for all these years. And the night of, which we call in the, in the game, mm. the night of the big pains. Oh. Um, the, 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 her father was asleep and the domestic workers in the house helped her. She gave her baby after the child was born to one of the domestic workers who had to just get rid of the child. The child was killed and buried near the fence of their property. Nobody knew. The neighbor's dogs were barking and barking and barking where the fresh sand was told. Mm. Only for them to dig up to see what was going on there, and found the um, the the baby the, ba the baby corpse in the oh. along the fence. Of course, she said, "Yes, she was pregnant, but um, she never gave permission that um, that the child had to be be taken away." This is what they've done. They told her that the that the child was dead. And so, um, she got a little bit of a slap on the wrist, but, but uh, all of the others, others were sentenced very harshly. Um, one of the person who had buried um, the, uh, uh, the, the baby, the, the baby oh. died on Robben Island. Sure. And I think, you know, eventually the, um, the domestic uh, the, lady, the domestic worker, uh, uh, the, the wife, mm. um, had also worked there. But their child, they had only one child. That child grew up without his parents. Mm. But I think these are the stories mm. that have to be written up. Yes. Um, good stories, bad stories. Yeah. The stories have to be told. Yes. Sure. So, um, so we've got a number of characters here, um, Sharon. Mm. Um, We've got David, David Stearman, who was banished to Robben Island for political reasons. Okay. Um, 
we've got Franz Jacobs, who was a teacher from Woodstock that was that was banished in the early in the in the um, in the nineteenth twentieth century mm -hmm. to Robben Island um, for his views. And then there were lepers, of course, that yeah, were lepers, that were yeah. that were banished mm -hmm. there. Sure. Um, so uh, yeah, um, where can people get hold of the story, Van? I mean, look, about the game. Look, what we we. The, to be honest, Sharon Valdi and I are busy wrapping up this part of our journey. Ah. We're busy wrapping up this part of our journey. We've, we've, um, I think we've both also realized that that this game cannot be sitting at our homes. It mm. has to fly. Mm -hmm. It has to get breathing space. Yeah. Um, and so we've been in conversation with um, the District Six Museum. Oh wow. To see to what extent they can make use of yes. of this as a as a tool yeah. to tell the stories of the Cape, yeah. Um, because the District Six Museum, as you know, is not only about um, the people that were dispossessing the District mm. Six; it is really about the stories mm. of dispossession, of dispossession mm. um, and the stories of our of our of our people. Yeah. Um, um, as we as 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 we journey through mm. through this country, yeah. So um, sure. so we are in conversation with um, the District Six Museum, um, who, by the way, is having um, financial challenges, and I think um, this is probably also the story of so many other organisations mm. who are battling mm. um, not only through COVID nineteen mm. and the the consequences thereof, but also because of the different kind of Funding patterns that have emerged over the past couple of years. Uh, so, 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 please spare a thought, or a penny, or a coin, or a note for the District Six Museum. There's an appeal, guys. Who is really um, speaking about heritage, mm. speaking about agency, identity, speaking about identity, and trying mm. to narrate. Mm. The relevance of all of that mm. within a modern milieu and a modern context, mm. uh, so that we so that we we stay relevant mm. in terms of how we see these things. Yes. Um, I think it was easier, Sharon, in during the apartheid years because it was very clear mm. what you were opposed to. Mm. I think there are different kind of nuances and subtleties mm. that have emerged mm. um, over the years. Mm. And I think that um, we still have a role to play. Mm. We still have a big role to play when it comes to our forebears yeah. who had a very different vision mm. for South Africa as a mm. country. Mm. And so I think that is also part of where we need to be going. And I'm not speaking party politics. Yeah. Yeah. I'm no. speaking about um, that which we wish for ourselves mm. as a country yeah. and, it, and as a people. Yeah. And it shows where our focus is because, I mean, where in another country we have national pride while well, they let a place like the District 6 Museum just, um, you know, what do you repeat out? They just disappear. You know, it's uh, we need to get that national pride, Vern, and we need, yeah. to, we need to put our um, national consciousness on top. We mustn't treat it as a, as something that just passes by yeah. and we celebrate on Heritage Day. This is important. Yeah. Not only for saving District 6, if they're going to be able to sell it, but this, uh, the, do you have, the stories, do you have copies of this that um, if schools are interested? Um, and, and you, look how powerfully you told this story and then you must go around, Vernon, as part of your responsibility as an... Um, uh, uh, a citizen with agency. Now look at <laughs> Vernon on his spot here. But Vernon I mean, uh, must be invited. Guys, you can invite Vernon. This is a treasure trove of memories, of culture, of history, of legacy, of heritage, of identity, Vernon. Let me say... This is not just a board game. Yes, yes it is. And, and, I, I and don't it was born by, you know, it was created by two teachers. I know, I'm, I'm like all over Bernie. <laughs> because this is what, you know, what Heritage Day is all about. We need to start looking at ourselves critically. We need to realize that this is not a pity party and complain that everybody's brying. Then what are you doing if you're not brying? Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. I, 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 do, I, I do think that... that um, Citizens allow 
things like this to happen. Mm. Um, mm. If we're thinking that it is up to the salvation of the state or a government or whatever, um, that is why I'm saying it is about citizens actually taking um, ownership. ownership. So, so we are going to be working within partnership, Sharon, just coming back to the board game. Yeah, yeah, we are working yeah. in partnership with, um, with the District 6 Museum. Museum. Um, we will come and do another another unvoke thing with you yes. um, to, to give you some update. Game. Play the game. This must I'll be bring Valdi along. I'll bring Valdi along. Yes, guys. The, um, just so that we start this conversation mm. because this was never just to be supposed to be a consumerist item. It's not for consumerism. Mm. It is about stories being facilitated here we go and other debates um, emanating from yeah, those kinds yeah, of discussions yeah. it's a vehicle it's, it's a vehicle to open it's the a con- tool the door for the conversation it's a tool, tool. for those here kinds of conversations it sure. was never supposed to be an end in itself yeah it's not just your scrabble it's not monopoly a monopoly you know it's not a monopoly it's it's powerful stuff then eh? but it, it it allows for other kinds of mm-hmm. subtle issues Issues such as collusion, mm. issues such as um, uh, dishonesty, mm. issues such as corruption. Yeah, yeah. Um, Basic human characters are the trace. human characteristics yeah, yeah. and how to unpack that mm-hmm. and how to deal with that within the context yeah. of, of, of a very ta- tactile mm. um, tool, mm. I can call mm. it that. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, um, we are still in conversation with the District 6 Museum. They yeah. are very positive about how they could possibly use it. Yes. They've got um, brilliant stories mm. um, running throughout the epochs mm. um, of South African history. Mm. They have partnerships and relationships yeah. across the um, across the African continent. Mm. I think today they've got something which they call a hackathon. Oh, um, wow. They have um, something, I think they call it a hackathon. Yes, we have. And part of that is to develop um, online kind yes, of tools. Yes, yes, right. And I mean, Awful, eh? this could possibly be um, where this game could eventually of live. Of course, of course. But um, yeah, Sharon, so those oh. are some of the stories that I just wanted to share with you. Guys, amazing Kevin, it's great to hear from you as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Kevin, I must not get Kevin in the house at some point. Yeah. But guys, um, those of you who are watching, I hope you're enjoying Vernon's stories as much as I am enjoying it here. And I obviously will get him in again because I want Vernon to actually play this game with his um, co-founder, not co-creator, yeah. Valdi. Yeah. And, um, you know, these are the possibilities out there. Vernon, this was so powerful, so profound. Sharon? Stop the anchors now. We see you back. We were at Robin Island. We came yeah, down. Yeah, we went to meters. We were running the mile yes, and the block yes, from going to Tokyo. Yes, 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 yeah, yes. amaze balls, amaze yeah. balls. And I think, I think you know, um, oh. if one can identify that you aren't sitting here on your own, but that you are standing on the shoulders of others who had gone before you. Yeah, um, because I think that is a very powerful thing. Mm. When you realize that um, who you are, mm. the way you reason, the way you think, mm. Um, the way you are mm, mm. is all part of a whole long line mm. of people who have influenced yes, that. Of course. Um, and so for me, that is a very mm. important facet of how I try to mm. view what legacy mm. and heritage is about. Yeah, no, wow. Guys, I'm not even going okay. to summarize that, but I hear what you're saying, when, because I think we lost that African, that is part of our African character, our culture, that yeah. we are. We believe in collectivism. Yes. This individual yes. drive. It's not yes. African. Yes. You know, we yes. are the Ubuntu's. Yes. We yes. the yes. we the groups, we the villagers, we work together. Yes. But we've been, you know, those um, people have severed those relationships in the pursuit of a lot of other things. Yeah. I do think though that you know, um, our generation often become very um, very uh, 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 but no. no very critical oh. of the of the of the millennials and the younger yes. folks because we want them also to co- they've got it they don't mm. have my my son doesn't have my baggage mm. yes he's aware mm. 
he is conscious, but I don't have the same kinds of, um, he doesn't have that same kind of passion mm -hmm. and influence and drive mm -hmm. to want to do the community kind of stuff that I feel I need to be doing. Yeah. He's living it out in a completely in a different way. I was going to say that now. And they we, shape it differently. They shape it differently. Mm -hmm. And there, the relevance for them mm -hmm. is in different spaces. Yes. And in different modes. Yeah. Um, so, young people don't know about this kind of protests mm -hmm. that we are talking about. Mm -hmm. Or the freedom songs that mm -hmm. we are talking about. Mm -hmm. Or the, um, the community activism that we are talking mm -hmm. about. Um, so there are social activists, yeah, no. but in different spaces, in different, different spaces, places. And different language that they use. Different language. I mean, they're communicating, they, they do more community work, or oh, they connect more with people, but they're not doing it like we would do it. They, they, the digital lot. Yeah. And I think the, 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 the youngsters are also dealing with, with um, are also bombarded with consumerism mm. very differently from what we are accustomed mm. to. Um, mm. So, so often we think, wow, uh, is this what is important mm. for these kids? Mm. I think we need to continue to mm. tell the stories mm. that the children are able to choose and make informed decisions. Yes. Right? yes. So yes. that is uh, that is that is my story today, Sharon. Yeah, Bye, for Yes, there. I learned it. Thank you, Bert. <laughs> Powerful stuff, guys. I, I'm sure those of you are still online, and those of you are going to watch the replay. Um, I'm sure you're going to take a lot of, you know, just um, pearls of wisdom and just, I suppose, identify with many things that Vernon said today. So, Vernon, I want to say thank you. I'm not so sorry. Through, and my cousin, guys, sorry. <laughs> and yes, I'm going to now lay my claim here. <laughs> Thanks, Vernon. You really um, shared sure. from the heart. And I liked you. Yes, I just like the truth. You know, you're speaking to the to power. Really. Um, powerful stuff, agency and ABCs, and you know, calling um, in, 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 in telling your story, yeah, you know, that yeah. we haven't arrived, we can see yeah. we're still struggling, but we first have to find ourselves, like you see, yes. first have to know our own stories, yes. yeah, yeah, powerful yes. stuff. Bye -bye. Yeah. Thanks, guys. And so, that, that we're gonna play to the song, and we're just gonna dance you out to see what song is able to dance on, guys. Let's see, um, Bernie, this I like this one song, uh, what's it, um. What is it now? This I don't know if it's this one. Guys, thanks so much. Yeah, this one. I like this one too. <laughs> Give me rowdy. I would love to you. you will like this one. I'm just changing the song because I'm trying to get the one that I know Vern will like. Vern, these are all copyright uh what do you say? Copyright free. Yeah. yeah I didn't yeah. play that one. Mm -hmm. Now this is quite say no. No, I oh, me. That's it. Things turn down. <laughs> Did you manage to drink some of your juice? Lovely. Uh, I don't know where it's at. 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 You really had. You know what's going on? You were amazing. It was amazing. Let's go. Okay, we're gonna eat a little bit more. Very good. We're dancing up.